Hey, how are you? It's John from Dowie Farm. I'm just uh, doing an incubator update here. I just uh, transferred these little buggers into uh, the hatcher, and I did have some bad ones. And uh, I did have a power failure over here, and this guy was shaking a minute ago. This little one with the brown bottom tip there. It's not going to shake now, of course, but uh, <laughs> you're right. I did. I got my humidity up to 70%, as my old little humidity gauge will tell you. And uh, <clears throat> this thing I bought, and uh, I thought it was going to give me humidity, but it's giving me the out here humidity and not on the probe, so that's basically useless. Um, I mean, it is sending me the internal temperature of the incubator to my phone, so that's cool. I can check that, but... I have to pay them for alerts. It's not much, it's like 12 bucks a year. <clears throat> but um, I didn't. <laughs> and then the power went out here and I probably should have. Anyway, so I've got decent temperature. I had to adjust my Inkbird here, my Inkbird uh, thermostat. Now that says 97.8. And this one here says 98.4. And this one here says 97.8. So I guess I'm gonna go with 97.8, um, which is not great, but I did just add water and uh, I did just turn the temperature down one degree. I set it to 99 because I was getting too high temps when I got here. And the top was just open a few minutes ago. So I may pop that back up to 100 because uh, we want 99.5. So I don't know. I think I'm going to do that actually. Here. I can't wishy washy because here's the deal. Like my. There we go. Let me do that. Bam. My. Um, grow room is pretty warm as you see it's 78 degrees in here and when I was doing this at home it was not it was like 60 something probably in the room if I was lucky and it was very inconsistent so I think I'm getting higher temps here in the incubator with that thing controlling it because it's not as uh, it's not as cool here as it is there anyway uh, so yeah I hooked up this lacrosse mobile alerts thing and it really didn't do what I needed it to do and uh, see now we're back we're going up we're going up see 98.4 already so that's good they spent a few minutes a little low but that's not that big of a deal I got my humidity up they're in the hatcher the wrote the turner is out I did have a few go bad uh, probably because my power outage here's one here it's kind of nasty you get like a hole in the top it's kind of gross and then I got one more in there that's cracked that I saw but I'm not opening this again I'm on lockdown you can see it right to the t to the left so like two kind of center screen to the left of my humidity uh, gauge you can see a crack and a little drop on that one that's dried on that one's definitely bad and that's probably I'm getting a little bit of a smell and that's probably why um, and there's probably another one like that somewhere in there but you know it's Monday we ha we expect these little guys to hatch on Wednesday and uh, let's see if I can do this and uh, yeah so it's kind of a bummer that we went a week uh, not selling eggs so that we could load this thing and then have that power failure and uh, it was kind of my own fault for hooking it into a circuit that I knew was kind of eh, and then Jenny had a good idea, and I had a outlet in the bathroom here <laughs> that's not used for anything, and it's on kind of its own deal. Uh, so I hit an extension cord up in the, on that after she mentioned that, and uh, yeah, we did that. So that was a good idea on her part, good observation, and uh, luckily she did that. I would have just kept uh, hoping that it didn't blow again. <laughs> so sometimes I don't think of these things. Anyway, uh, yeah, so here we are. It's Monday. They're going to hatch starting probably tomorrow through Thursday. Uh, Wednesday is day 18, so we're hoping to get a good hatch. I'm realistically expecting to get about 50%, which would be about 40, um, because of the power outage deal. I'm really still hoping for 60, but uh, I'm sure because of that, it's, it's kind of a lost cause. And, uh, hey, you know, you, you change things sometimes, and it's better, and sometimes it's worse, and so be it. Uh, we're up to 99 and a half now, so that's good. First time I did it this way, I had that thing set uh, differently, and I didn't have quite enough, um, you know, I didn't have it up high enough, so I didn't have uh, the temperature right, and I got a low hatch, and then the second time I did it, I had the temperature set right, and I had the humidity right, and we got a good hatch. And, uh, of course, this is the third run with this thing, uh, with this exact setup at least, and uh, probably going to see what happens when the power goes out for five hours. So uh, see what happens. It made me think about a battery backup system because I'm sure that this thing isn't very high wattage. It would probably run on a deep cycle battery with an inverter for a while. So uh, it's definitely a thought to keep in mind. Uh, in retrospect, I probably should have also bought some eggs and set up two incubators at once so that I could just get this done with because now I'm going to have to go through the process again and 
You know what I mean? Like it's easier just to do it once and be done with it. Have a baby quail around is an added daily chore. It's no extra work to have 300 of them. You know what I mean? Instead of 40. <laughs> so it's the same brooder. It's the same feeding. It's the same watering. It's the same daily chores. So like you might as well just do a bunch and then just not. You know what I mean? So anyway, that's what I got. I'll do another update on the quail situation tomorrow. And, uh, or on Wednesday, tomorrow and Wednesday probably, and we'll see where it goes. Uh, thanks a lot. Take it easy.